What's going on everybody and welcome back to this week's Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris, I'm gonna be your host for today and today we have a special one. I have a big announcement today so make sure you stick around for our Bourbon Bomb of the Week. But today we have Widow Jane Lucky 13. This is a 93 proof coming out of Widow Jane Distillery. Now we're gonna get into all the details on this bottle soon but everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Damn, pretty good. So as I mentioned, this is Widow Jane. This comes out of Widow Jane Distillery. It tells you though right on the bottle, this is a sourced bourbon. It says distilled in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana, bottled by Widow Jane Distillery in Brooklyn, New York. So I'm going to assume being out of Indiana as their last one that the majority of this comes from MGP. There's not a lot. I mean, there's definitely other people in Kentucky uh, that, are, that have aged bourbon that they're willing to source. But Indiana, MGP, it just all makes sense that the majority of this is coming from MGP. It's an undisclosed mash bill and everything like that. I do also have the Widow Jane 10 year. We did this as my bachelor party review. I'm actually pretty sure, I don't know if you can see how much is left in this, but I drank the majority of that at my bachelor party that day and it was not a good day the next day. We tried to golf, I didn't make it too far. But for this one, this is a 93 proof. Widow Jane's claim to fame is more of the um, limestone mineral water from New York is what they use to proof things down. So whatever the barrels come out at, they use the limestone mineral water to get this down in 93 proof. How much does that actually affect the taste? I'm not too sure. I would love to talk to somebody at Widow Jane to see like what a regular tap water versus the limestone mineral water that they're using. If it really does that much of a difference when it comes to the flavor profile. 93 proof, sourced bourbon, 13 years, undisclosed mash bill is what we're going with here. This initially came out as a single barrel release, the Lucky 13. Um, basically companies could go or individuals could go buy a whole barrel, taste it. If they liked it, they get to buy the whole barrel and that's what they called their Lucky 13. Since then, they've gotten enough product to be able to basically small batch this up. I don't know how many bottles go into it, but now it's considered a small batch. They release it at 93 proof. And it's not even on their website. That's how new this is. This came out in September of 2021. So to get my hands on it here in Pennsylvania in October is kind of crazy because we usually don't get things that quick. But I guess being from New York rather than Kentucky, we're a little bit closer. So we got our hands on it. So that's what we have going on in this bottle. We're going to get into the three categories, though, that we use to rate this price, taste, drinkability. But before we get started on all of that, make sure you click that subscribe button. We're really growing here on this channel. And I think it's because we started mentioning this at the beginning of the video rather than the end. Click that subscribe button, check us out on Discord, check us out on Patreon, all that good stuff, but enough about that. This, we're going to start on drinkability. How much of an ethanol kick does this really have? We're going to take one more sip, and then let's talk about it. So this is only a 93 proof. It's nothing crazy. We've been drinking a lot more 100 bottled and bond, 100 plus proof stuff recently. So I don't expect a huge ethanol kick with this. It's definitely not an 80 proof. It doesn't drink like an 80 proof. I feel like once you tip that 90 proof scale, you start to get into something with a little bit of a bite to it. And that's not a bad thing because without that proof, you're not going to get the flavor profiles that I think this exceptionally um, opens up to. So at 93 proof, I don't think this is a bad thing for drinkability at all. I think it's actually pretty exceptional and I would give it a very good score when it comes to drinkability. I'm going to give it like an 8.8 .8 when it comes to drinkability on this. I think it deserves to be up there. Your first glass, the neck pour, it does have a little bit of heat to it, but we all know the, you know, whether it's rumor or not, that neck pour does seem to have a little bit of something before you let this bottle open up. So at an 8.8, .8, I think that's a fantastic spot for this for a 93 proof bourbon, and maybe that's the limestone mineral water talking. Who knows? Up next, we're going to get into taste on this, and that's where I think this bottle actually shines. This flavor profile is right in my wheelhouse of what I really do love when it comes to bourbon. It's going to give you straight off the bat, I'm getting a very good caramel apple note. And if you look up any of the, there's not even that many reviews on it, but the few people that I've talked to that have had it, that's the first thing that they mentioned, this caramel apple note. And it almost, at least to me, I haven't heard anybody mention this yet, but almost like a, we actually just started at our ice cream store with decorating caramel apples with peanuts on it. Very popular when, when it comes to caramel apples. That's what I'm getting here. You get a little bit of a peanut or some type of nut flavor profile, but at the same time, you get that real big whiff of caramel off the nose. You get that real big, like crisp caramel. It's perfect for this time of the year, that autumn weather. Put this by a, put this by a bonfire, and this is an absolute fantastic pour. The caramel apple with the peanuts, 
Then this really opens up. The, the crazy thing is there's not a lot of vanilla on this. I thought I was going to get a little bit more vanilla. The sweetness is there, but it's not vanilla. It seems like that toasted caramel apple with peanuts more than anything else. And then it really works its way into that age, into that 13-year, that oak, little bit of leather, little bit of tobacco flavor. The oak definitely takes over on the finish. You kind of move away from that sweetness. The rye spice in the middle with some cinnamon, some allspice, some black pepper, and it's just a crazy transition through these flavor profiles. Sweet off the front, the rye, the spice, the cinnamon in the middle, and then that oak age leather on the back end. It's fantastic. I love it. I'm not a big oak guy when it comes to oak, but again, I think it's something like our Knob Creek lineup here where the nine years kind of lacking something just a little bit, the 12 years sits just right, and then the 15 years is almost too much oak. Widow Jane has the 10 year, like I mentioned before, this is the 13 year, then they have a 15 year as well. The 15 year is just priced outlandishly, if you ask me. $229 for that. This sits at $100, which is MSRP. The 10 year sits at uh, $70, which isn't terrible. I thought it was a little overpriced for the 10 year, but again, I think that's just lacking something where this one isn't lacking what I thought that was. So the taste profile on this is, again, what I love in bourbon is I can work my way through the flavor profiles. I can get a different experience every time I take a sip. I can focus on something different and I just really enjoy this a lot. So for this, flavor wise, we're gonna put it up there in the nines. We have to, it's just that good, I promise you. At least as far as my palate goes, I'm gonna give this like a 9.43, 9.35 when it comes to taste on this and it absolutely deserves to be up there. This is a fantastic bottle. And last but certainly not least, as you all know, we're going to get into price on this. And again, I already mentioned this drops in at $100. I think at one point it was $120 here in PA. MSRP is $100 on it. Um, I think it was $120 here in PA. Um, don't quote me on that. And then it did drop down to the MSRP on sale, aka they just put it back down to MSRP. Sometimes PA tries to trick you with that kind of stuff where they put it up and then you're like, oh, it's on sale. I should grab it. Um, even though they're just dropping it right back down to MSRP anyway. But at 120, I don't know how much I love it. At $100, I love this bottle. We already talked about it. Drinkability, fantastic. The taste profile on this, exceptional. So paying $100 for this bottle definitely gets up into that realm of a little bit of an expensive bottle, but we're getting better, older MGP source product, as well as a couple other barrels in here coming from Kentucky and Tennessee. The It does seem like Widow Jane does care about the actual at the quality of their bourbon, their 10-year release is fantastic. I haven't had the 15-year yet, but it seems like they actually care about what their bourbon tastes like rather than just putting it out to try and make a quick buck off of it. Now, they are pricing it at a premium, but it is sourced, so you know you're going to pay a little bit more there. It does taste like a more of a high rye mash bill, so you know you're going to pay it more, a little bit more there. And it's 13 years old, so if this is a majority 13-year-old MGP product, I actually just picked up, my parents picked me up the Remus Repeal, which is apparently... MGP's best product that that they have so we're gonna find out about that But I'd love to see if this is majority MGP how it compares to something like a Remus repeal uh, batch 5 So for this price wise hundred dollars sure It's a tough ask. Do I think it's the worst price? Absolutely not especially with everything that you're gonna get out of this bottle. I Love it. It'll probably be one of those bottles that I don't reach for every day because of the price There's a lot of stuff out there. That's cheaper that you can reach for daily. It's not gonna be a daily sipper but as far as something that maybe, like I said, I'm going outside, I want to sit out back on a beautiful autumn day, fall day, getting a little bit of a crisp in the air, that's what you're going to get from this with that apple, that that caramel, just that crispiness, but it's also going to warm you up on the back end with that, that age, that 13 year is really going to show itself. So price on this, I'm going to keep it up there in the high eights. I think this deserves to be pushing a nine. I don't know what it's going to break down to exactly, but I'm going to give this like an 8.9 when it comes to price on this. Don't think it's too bad. I don't think it deserves to be in the nines quite yet because $100 is still a little bit of a tough ask for a bottle. So 8.9 is where we'll put it. So I won't hold you in suspense any longer while we add these scores up. Let's send it over to this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week and break the big news that you guys have all been waiting for. Let's do this. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. Marissa's water just broke. She's in the shower. I put my hat on just for the video. Um, yeah. Today's the day. 2.40 a.m. October 13th, Wednesday. We're packing up the, packing up the car. Contractions are getting stronger. I'm fine. We're doing just fine. We got this. Um, 
Yeah. He's excited. Backing up. So happy. I'm on the phone with the doula. Pop champagne, obviously. I'm like a little nervous. Four thirty AM hour three and a half. Hundred and fifteen heartbeats per no, minute. One ten. One ten. Baby one forty. Sipping water. On my body armor. Ten hours to go. No. <laughs> we are. 12.26, four hours after birth. Zero out of 10, no. do not recommend. I don't have any words. Do not recommend. She's cute. She's a girl. One last walk through. 7.30 at night. One last feeding. I've seen things in this room I never want to see again. Ending of the video now, 7.37. We're leaving. Can't see. Still got the mask on. Can't see her in the in mirror. There. She's in there though. Get home safe. 8.20, just got home. Everybody's here, pop champagne. Ghost didn't get the meter yet. Pops is somewhere. What do you think? Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So that's right, folks. I have been blessed with the beautiful baby girl that we have today. Couldn't thank you guys enough for supporting me up until this point. Uh, a lot of these videos have been very hard to get to, very with everything going on, eight and a half months pregnant, nine months pregnant wife. She's been the most amazing person in my life with it when it comes to this project that I've been working on to try and grow this community. And a lot of you guys have really been supportive for me. I, I see you in other chats asking, how's the wife? How's the baby? We're watching Bourbon Junkies. We're watching Mash and Drum. We're watching the Bourbon Van, Black Bourbon Family, all of them. And you guys are asking in those chats, you know, how's the wife? How's the baby? Absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you guys enough. And I can't thank my wife enough for supporting me even at eight and a half, nine months pregnant for still being able to put out this content and bringing you guys this. So God bless you guys for that. I appreciate you. But that's enough about that. Oh, by the way, thank you to my brother. He bought me this bottle, Widow Jane Lucky 13. My baby was born on the 13th. So that's what we have here. And that's why we're doing this bottle. Do I think I'm a little bit biased? Maybe I give it a little bit better score because of that? No, it's an absolute fantastic bottle, which is why it's actually number two on our list right now, jumping in at a 9.02. You really can't beat this bottle. Again, the price is a little bit too much, but at the same time, with what you're getting, quality, as well as everything that goes into this bottle, a 13-year-old bourbon, right now, just the way that the bourbon boom is going, you're going to pay a little bit more of a premium to get these older bottles because not a lot of people are really sticking their necks out and getting into that older sourced bourbon because they know that they can put out a 9-year or a 10-year, make it now, and get the money that they want. So... Widow Jane doing great things over there. 9.02 sitting at second place right now on our ranking sheet. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have had this, what you think about it, if you agree or disagree with my score. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m. I drop an image of the bourbon that we're going to review. You can go on and try and guess my score. If you guess the closest, I'll give you a shout out on the channel as well as enter you in a monthly drawing for some cool prizes. I'm not using one right now, but we have custom glens. We got hoodies. We got t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. 
Make sure you check me out on Patreon. If you guys want to support me on there, you feel free to do that anytime you want. And come chat with us on Discord. We're always looking for more people to chat. Once we hit 100 people on Discord, we're going to do a Discord giveaway as well. But that's it for this week. Thank you guys again. I'm going to go see my baby girl right now. I appreciate you all. Don't drink a drive. Drink responsibly. And as always, stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all.